this between your teams disqualified. Um, so if you have anything, backpacks, purses, give them to your coaches now. We all want to get started. But I didn't want to, I just wanted to take a minute, first of all, to congratulate you all for getting here. All 160 of you, 41 coaches, all the people who've come to cheer you on. Again, another round of applause for you. Congratulations for getting here. It's also my good fortune and my job to thank the sponsors of this event, kind of on the backs of your t-shirts. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Exxon Mobil, who's the major sponsor for this year's Academic World Quest, if you'd give them a round of applause. Second, we also have, live and in person, Michael Maybach of the Maybach Foundation, who's also a major sponsor of today's event. Michael, we thank you very much. I've lost my representative from Germany. I think over there, the German Information Center. Please, sir, stand up. Thank you very much for all of your support. I think it's, it's particularly relevant today. Uh, the President Obama was yesterday in Germany, today at a NATO meeting. It's the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. So, sir, we congratulate you and we thank you very much for your support. <laughs> I also want to thank the Naples World Affairs Council. Thank you very much. And two more thank yous. One goes to the Center for Strategic and International Studies. John Hamry is the president of that fantastic institution. They have their Global Strategy Institute. And really importantly also is the Seven Revolutions program that they run. So we thank them as well. World Affairs Councils all over the country that you all represent, of course, put a huge amount of work uh, into this. And I also want to thank all of the people here in Washington at the National um, Council who've done so much to bring all this together. We thank you also. You are the end, of course, the pinnacle of a competition that had 3,000 people in it. People participated from all across the country. And some of the World Affairs Councils, as you know, as many of them had 70 teams participate. And we are very glad to welcome here today people from Hawaii, from Alaska, from Oregon, Texas, Montana, Florida, and Maine, and everywhere in between. I met the people from Hawaii. I met people from Kansas City. I met people from Hampton Roads, Virginia. So all of you, good luck to everybody. So my job now, and it's my honor, and also I thank him again to introduce Michael Maybach, who I think is his job to explain all the rules. Michael? <laughs> Ambassador, thanks very much for coming. <clears throat> uh, Mark Grossman was a U.S. Ambassador to Turkey, among other things, uh, in his uh, almost 30 years at the State Department. So he, if you get a chance to talk to him sometime, I'm sure you'll find out lots of things about the world. Uh, good morning, I'm Michael Maybach. I grew up in Peoria, Illinois. I think there's a Peoria to okay. <clears throat> So I'll be giving them all the right answers, as you know. <laughs> OK. We need to go over the rules. I think you know them, but we're going to go over them for everyone's uh, appreciation. Only write your answers on side A as an apple of the answer sheet. Write the name of the category under test name line on side A of each answer sheet. There are 10 rounds of 10 questions each. All the questions are multiple choice. You have one minute to answer each question. This man is the official timekeeper. Runners will collect answer sheets after each round, round of 10. After five rounds and 10 rounds, I will review the right answers. So while they're tabulating answers, we'll go through and tell you how you did. The first five place teams will be announced after the intermission and again after round 10. So after, after half of this is over, you'll know who the first five are. A team consists of four players. They have these blue t-shirts on. Player substitutions are not allowed during the competition. A player can only use the bathroom during the break. If a player leaves at any point during the rounds, he or she cannot return until after the break. Any questions about the rules? All right. Uh, teams are not allowed to consult with the audience, with wireless devices, cell phones, or other teams. 
books or written materials. As you know, you're not supposed to have any electronic devices, any written materials with you. Uh, so if you have any of those now that you've forgotten in your pocket, this is the time to remember them. Any team found by the World Affairs Council of America, judges, runners, or staff to be violating this rule will forfeit that round. Competitors may not have backpacks, purses, jackets, or other personal items on the floor during the competition. If a team believes another team is cheating, they will tell a World Affairs Council of America representative. However, if the other team is of any rules, the accusing team will forfeit one point. If your team wishes to challenge an answer, one of the team chaperones may bring the challenge calmly and politely to the head judge. <laughs> Calmly and politely, and we have a definition of that. The decision of the head judge is final. If your challenge is unsuccessful, your team will forfeit one point. Only the team chaperone can bring a challenge to the judges. Parents, alternatives, and other guests must remain off the f floor inside these red uh, lines at all times. Any questions about those rules? <laughs> so we're finished. <laughs> what do I do <laughs> What is this thing here? All right, I think maybe, maybe the, uh, I think we'll be okay. But um, scoring, one point for each right answer. No penalty for, yeah. That was my assistant, who knows all the answers to these. All right, one point for each right answer. No penalty for wrong answers or answers left Blank. If there is a tie for first through fifth, the sudden death tiebreaker round will be played. The awards, first place team, each student and their teacher get $1,000. Second place, 500 for each student and, and their teacher. Uh, and on down, fifth place. All right. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> So we're ready to go. All right. So we're going to go first for 10 questions about biotechnology and genetics. All right. Question one, the Human Genome Project is A, was completed ahead of schedule in 2003, B, is only half complete, C, was privately funded, and D, is fully sponsored by the Swiss government. Two, genome research can play an important role in the medical field. The genome map has assisted researchers in understanding genetic conditions such as A, dengue fever, B, tuberculosis, C, Alzheimer's, D, pandemic influenza. Three, genetic research helps law enforcement officials do all of the following except A, identify potential suspects whose DNA may match evidence left at crime scenes. B, exonerate persons wrongly accused of crimes. C, identify victims of natural disasters. And D, predict criminal behavior before it happens.
Four, nanotechnology has enabled the development of devices smaller than dust mites made of gears, chains, and computer chips for use in science and manufacturing. What is the name of this new technology? Roxanamine machines, microelectromechanical machines, nano sensors, Polarin technology. Five, which of these is a downside to increased technological innovation? A, the government will increase taxes to fund the U.S. Department of Technology. B, genetic engineering of crops and animals might have unforeseen side effects. C, only 200,000 people will be employed in nanotechnology field. Or D, technology will become more and more expensive as it develops over time. Which of these is a downside to innovation. Six, which of these is possible using nanotechnology? A, electronics laced clothing that can detect smoke. B, nuclear fusion. C, nano level electrical, electromagnets which will support hoovercrafts. Or D, teleportation devices that operate within distance of 10 meters. Seven, about X percent of food products on U.S. grocery shelves have at least one ingredient that is likely from a genetically engineered crop. A, 10 percent, B, 20 percent, C, 60 percent, D, 70 percent. What percentage? Eight, which of these was essential to the advancement of nanotechnology, allowing scientists to see the details of and manipulate atomic structures? A, ultrasonic instrumentation. B, the electronic pulse imager, EPI. C, the scanning tunneling microscope, STM. Or D, the high aperture telephoto lens, HATL which was essential to the advancement of nanotechnology.
Nine, nanotechnology has the potential to detect and destroy what types of cells? A, cancer cells, B, sickle cells, C, stem cells, or D, cytotoxic T cells? And 10, what two regions were the second and third largest investors in nanotechnology in 2005 behind the United States? A, the European Union and China. B, China and the United Kingdom. C, the United Kingdom and Japan. D, the European Union and Japan. Moving to a new topic, transnational crime. Number one, what is the estimate of how many people died? A, 470,000 to 500,000. B, 100 to 130,000. C, 10,000 to 40,000. Or D, 60 to 90,000 die every year in armed conflict around the world. Which of the following would not be considered an instance of human trafficking? A. Bella travels to the United States for seasonal work, is forced to work in a sweatshop, lives in poor conditions, and is unpaid. B. Juanita agrees to be a sex worker in Canada to support her family back home. C. Matudu obtains a work permit and comes to the European Union to work on a farm temporarily. And D, Natasha agrees to move from Russia to Dubai to become a full-time nanny. However, she quickly realizes she's been sold into an international prostitution ring. <laughs> well, that was the most exciting question we we're going to have for you. All right. Three, according to the United Nations World Drug Report, in 2007, approximately what percent of the global population between ages 15 and 64 has used illicit drugs? It's around the world. A, 0.05% or 0.5%, B, 5%, C, 15%, D, 30%. Percentage of global population using drugs. Illicit drugs.
Four. In 1997, AQ Khan began supplying which country with the equipment necessary to build a nuclear bomb? A. Israel. B. Russia. C. North Korea. D. Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Five, which country is the largest producer of opium? A, Colombia, B, Mexico, C, Afghanistan, D, China. Six, which continent has the highest homicide rate? A, Africa, B, Asia, C, Europe, D, South America. Highest homicide rate of these four. Seven, in 2007, Spain reported a 95% increase in the number of terrorist attacks compared to 2006. This can be partly attributed to what? A, the end of the ceasefire between Excati Ta Asca Tasahuna, the ETA, and the Spanish government. B, growing instability between ETA and Al Qaeda. C, the election of Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero as prime minister, or D, the collapse of the Spanish Socialist Workers Party. Eight, what is the term for providing farmers with an economically viable and legal alternative to growing cash crops that become illicit drugs? A, microfinance, B, alternative development, C, external intervention, or D, appeasement?
Nine. In 2007, the majority of people arrested in the European Union under suspicion of conducting global terrorist activities were citizens from which region? A. North America, B. The Middle East, C. Southeast Asia, or D. Europe? And 10, what is the most common type of terrorist attack committed in the European Union? A, arson, B, suicide bombing, C, cyber attack, or D, hijacking? The most common type of terrorist attack in the EU. Okay, we're going to pause here so we can pick up the answers you have thus far. Four. As Germany's parliament, the German Bundestag, stands at the center of the country's political life and is its supreme democratic organ, organ of state. How many political parties are represented in the Bundestag within the current 16th electoral term? How many parties? A, nine, B, two, C, seven, D, five parties. How many parties? <clears throat> Five. In 2008-2000... Four million?
A. Transatlantic Climate Grid. B. Transatlantic Environmental Council. C. Transatlantic Climate Initiative. Or D. Transatlantic Initiative for Climate Policy. In 2007, Germany hosted the annual G8 summit in which spa town? A. Baden Baden. B. I think. C. Heiligen Dam Dam. Or D. Bad Arlesen.
Okay, raise your hand if we have not picked up your card. Okay, thank you. We're moving on to the topic of water. One, water availability, quality, and biotechnology will play a key role in our ability to A, fight HIV AIDS, B, slow global warming, C, expand food production, or D, create peace in Afghanistan. Two, which of the following is contributing to Mexico's shortage of safe water? A, aging infrastructure, B, high elevation, C, rapid pace of urbanization, D, A and C. Three, Mexico City's population is growing rapidly. New water treatment plants are too expensive to build, so officials A, bring in bottled water, B, ignore the problem, C, draw more from rural sources, or D, ration water. Four, by 2025, an estimated blank people, blank number of people, will face serious constraints on their capacity to meet water demands. A, 300 million people, B, 350 million people, C, 1 billion people, D, 3.5 billion people. Five, what are the effects of water scarcity and lack of access to safe drinking water? A, more disease and death. B, more intra-intrastate conflict. C, more agricultural crisis. Or D, all of the above.
Six. In 2001, UNESCO and Green Cross International launched a program to promote peace and the use of transboundary watercourses by addressing conflicts and fostering collaboration among states and stakeholders. What is the name of this 2001 program? A, from potential conflicts to cooperation. B, program and water conflict management and transformation. C, water and sustainability initiative, or D, overcoming water scarcity and quality constraints. Seven, due to lack of water, China's northern provinces are plagued with what deadly disaster during the spring? A, sandstorms, B, drought, C, earthquakes, D, heat waves. Once you've completed your answer, if you could be quiet, uh, that would help the others discuss their, their uh, answers. Eight. By what year India's demand for water is expected to exceed all current sources of domestic supply. By what year? A, 2012, B, 2050, C, 2010, or D, 2020? Nine, halving the proportion of people worldwide who do not have access to or cannot afford safe drinking water by 2015 is the seventh of the eight United Nations MDGs. What does MDG stand for? A, Multinational Declaration of Goals. B, Millennium Development Goals. C, Millennium Development Goals. Declaration of Goals, or D, Multinational Development Goals. Ten, over what percentage of urban dweller, dwellers in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the developing world live in slums where they lack one or more of such basic services as access to sufficient living space, clean water, and improved sanitation facilities? A, 40 percent, B, 90 percent, C, 30 percent, D, 25% of urban dwellers in the developing world live in slums with such things as lack of clean water.
Okay, we're going to pick up your cards now. Was that uh... <laughs> Okay, everyone's card is turned in. We're going to begin. Uh, this is our fifth topic, alternative fuels. This will be our fifth topic, and then we'll be midway and we'll, we'll take a break, I'm pretty sure, yeah? All right, alternative fuels. Number one, according to the International Energy Agency, the IEA, what geographical regions of the world will produce the most oil and natural gas in the year 2030? A, Middle East and Latin America, B, Russia and Latin America, C, Middle East and various offshore locations, or D, Middle East and Russia. Two, because of their growing needs and current technology, India and China are increasingly dependent on what source of energy? A, solar, B, wind, C, coal, or D, geothermal? Three, by 2030, what country is expected to triple its coal-fired capacity in electricity production and will account for more than 50% of the increase in world's coal-fired electricity generation? A, China, B, Pakistan, C, India, D, the United States, by 2030. Four, what is the name of the process that uses the heat energy stored in the Earth's oceans to generate electricity? A, wave energy conversion. B, ocean thermal energy conversion. 
C, open cycle energy conversion, or D, ocean turbine energy conversion? Five, ethanol, a biofuel used in vehicles, is most commonly made from what in the United States? From soybean oil, from the starch in corn grain, from pyrolysis oil, or D, from phenol? Six, an electrical current can be used to separate water into its components of oxygen. Could we not have discussion during the questions? An electrical current can be used to separate water into its components of oxygen and hydrogen. What is the name of this process? A, electrosalysis. B, electric equipment partition. C, electromotive separation. D, reforming. Seven, wind, water, wave, and tidal power, all, A, are referred to by the Environmental Protection Agency as blue-green energy options, B, use fluid motion to turn turbines and activate generators, C, are all in widespread use throughout the United States, or D, can replace fossil fuels as a primary energy source in the near future. Eight, this particular use of solar power requires the installation of photovoltaic cells. A, passive space heating. B, active space heating. C, electricity production. Or D, water heating.
Nine, a tap chan and a pendulor device are two technologies used to harness what source of renewable energy? A, hydropower, B, solar energy, C, ocean wave power, or D, wind energy? Ten, the use of biomass as an energy source in India is expected to drop from 668 million people in 2005 to 470 million people in 2030, while the use of what grows? A, solar energy, B, wind energy, C, nuclear energy, D, electricity. <laughs> 